All right, let's now talk about just a really important definition to say if you're differentiable at a value, an x value. We say f is di differentiable at x equals a if f prime of a exists. You can think about this graphically or algebraically looking at the derivative function. So let's say you take the derivative of a function, but then that function has, has an issue where, where you, if you, so maybe the denominator goes to zero or becomes zero when you plug in a value. We would say that f is not differentiable at that point. We also say f is differentiable on an interval, let's say a, b, if the, the function is differentiable at every point in that interval. All right, so we have a function here. This is the toolkit function one over x. If we look at this, we would actually say this function is not differentiable at x equals zero. Graphically, we say it's not differentiable at x equals zero because this function isn't defined here. You have to be defined and continuous in order to be differentiable. The second way to argue that it's not differentiable is if we look at here, I've provided the first derivative of, of one over x. And if we try to plug in a zero here, we'll get a division by zero. So since we can't compute the first derivative of our function at x equals zero, we would say it's not differentiable. In this next example, we're looking at the function, the absolute value of x. This function actually is not differentiable at zero also. The reasoning here is a little bit different than the previous example. Again, we argued previously, well, the function wasn't defined at zero, therefore it can't be differentiable there. This absolute value of x is actually a continuous function. There are no breaks in this function. The limit at any point is also the function value, as you can see here. We have here the piecewise definition of the absolute value function also. But graphically in this case, this function is not, gra not differentiable, excuse me, at x equals zero, because remember the derivative is the, is the limit as the slopes approach from both sides. In this case, the slopes from the left are negative one always, even as you approach zero, and they're positive one from the right side is zero. Here is the derivative of the absolute value function right here. And the issue is, as you approach zero, the slopes are not approaching the same value. From the left, they're staying stagnant at negative one. From the right, they're staying stagnant at positive one. Therefore, if you ever have a function that has a sharp corner like this or a kink, it's not differentiable. And in this third and final graphical representation, we have the cube root of x here. And here is the derivative of the cube root of x is one over three times the cube root of x squared. This function is also not differentiable at x equals zero. This is probably the least obvious of the example so far because it's continuous and it meets up, we see somewhat naturally. But the issue here is that actually at x equals zero, the cube root of x function has a vertical tangent. So the slope is undefined. And given that the derivative is talking about slope, it's also undefined. Algebraically, we could see that with this right here, the derivative, if we try to plug in a zero into the derivative function, we'll see that we also get this division by zero issue. One interesting thing to note before I move on from this example, and we'll be looking at this more and more often, if you look at this derivative function right here, because of this x squaring, that ensures outside of the issue at x equals zero, is that the slope of this function is always positive, right? Because when you plug even a negative number into this, there's no way you can output a negative because the x gets squared first. If you look at this entire function, every slope on this, it's not the most accurate representation, right? But if it was, every slope, every tangent line you, you write on this, outside of what happens vertically here at x equals zero, all of those slopes will be at least a little bit positive. All right, as we wrap up this video, I want to give you some last notes that we talked about that are very important moving forward. First of all, if f is differentiable at a value, that means that it's f has to be continuous. And then if you have any experience with if-then statements, the contrapositive of the statement must also be true. And that is, if f is not continuous, then f is not differentiable. Again, I'm speaking in shorthand. This is at a point or on an interval. This means it'll hold both true. But again, differentiability implies continuity. If you're not continuous, then you absolutely can't be differentiable. Some people then make the wrong assumption 
that if f is continuous, that implies that f is differentiable. But we saw an example where that wasn't true. When we looked at the absolute value of x, it was continuous at x equals zero, but it was not differentiable. So this statement here is not true.